Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how the Japanese art of kirigami is being used in engineering to make robots that can move like snakes and grip the most fragile objects. The word kirigami literally means cut paper. For example, I have a completely flat paper here that I've just cut in certain spots. So watch what happens when I prop it up. It becomes some 3D stairs. <laughs> it's really cool. For a long time, kirigami was seen as just a neat artistic novelty. But now engineers and scientists have started to use this art as well. For example, one of the problems in robotics is being able to grasp small, slippery, fragile, and deformable objects. It's really hard to use hydraulics and motors to make fine, nimble adjustments that are needed oh. for hands. But recently, researchers have been using kirigami-inspired hands for robots. I have some here. So these are flat, 3D-printed shapes. At first glance, it doesn't look like these could pick anything up. But if I just pull on these at the right spot, you can transform them into grippers. What's neat about these grippers is that they can pick up things that are slippery and fragile without destroying the thing it's trying to pick up. Normally, in order to pick something up, there has to be a feedback system that's able to sense pressure or resistance to the motor. But if you just have a robot at the end of this gripper, then if you pull too hard, it doesn't put too much pressure. For example, you can see when I try to pick up this raspberry, even if I pull too hard, it doesn't squish the raspberry. So I can put a lot of force on this and I don't squish the raspberry. I get to the limits of it before I start breaking the mechanism and it still doesn't squish the raspberry. And you can even make them in different sizes. Here's a mini version of that one. Should still work with this raspberry. So you can see how when it comes together, there's actually multiple contact points, at least four right there, but the more it grips it, look how many contacts there are on the raspberry here. See how it deforms around the raspberry? So it's almost like a finger picking up the raspberry, how I can deform my finger around the raspberry and be very soft with it so that I don't crush it. It looks almost like a Venus flytrap eating stuff. <laughs> and you can even make these almost any size, so you can pick up the smallest things, like even a grain of sand. These grippers are called compliant mechanisms. I did a video about compliant mechanisms and showed how useful they can be, because they're easy to manufacture and they don't wear out very easily. For example, a good way to pad things in a package is to use a honeycomb shape. Even paper gets pretty strong if it's in the shape of a honeycomb but it's not easy to manufacture this way. But if you just use kirigami, you can transform flat paper into strong honeycomb shapes that can be used in packaging to replace bubble wrap. You can see how when I just tug on it, it transforms into a three-dimensional honeycomb shape. So watch how it's initially flat, but then when I stretch it, it pops up into three dimensions. And what's even cooler about this is that it actually becomes like a spring. The applications for this kirigami in science are endless. In fact, there was a paper recently published that showed mathematically how you can convert any two-dimensional shape into another two-dimensional shape or even any other three-dimensional shape by cutting it in the right spots. Researchers have even made a robot worm that deforms to grip the ground when it stretches so it moves like a snake or a worm. So what are some applications that you can think of for kirigami in science, engineering, or whatever field you're in? And before we end, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. Established Titles, based out of Hong Kong, owns hundreds of acres of land in Scotland, and they assign you some of that land known as souvenir plots. This means that it's not registered land and it can be sold for commemorative purposes or as a souvenir. Since the title Lord is not an official title, and since you own these souvenir plots, they then refer to their customers as Lords and Ladies. Their title packs assign you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelson, Scotland, and a certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your souvenir plot. They also plant a tree with every order and work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. These certificates make an amazing last-minute gift. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale right now. 
Plus, you can use the code THEACTIONLAB to get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash theactionlab to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Remember, the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And check out theactionlab.com where we sell Action Lab gear. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.